Silent night, holy night, all is calm. All all is not calm, okay? Nothing's calm. It's Christmas and George Washington and the Continental Army are on their way. I'm talking about the battles of Trenton and Princeton, the Christmas time conflicts that may have saved the American Revolution. In the late fall of 1776, things were not going George Washington's way. His Continental Army had suffered setback after setback. The British had driven the Americans out of Manhattan, taking 2,000 patriots prisoner. Washington himself had narrowly avoided capture. Morale was low, and the American colonists doubted the ability of the Continental Army to fend off the British. Perhaps this revolution thing wasn't such a good idea after all. Some American troops deserted, and as their year-long enlistments expired, more and more of them were leaving the army. Let's face it, who wants to play for the losing team? Washington knew he had to do something, or the revolution would be over. So. He decided to attack Trenton, New Jersey. After their defeat in New York, the Americans had fled across the Hudson River to New Jersey, then further south across the Delaware River into Pennsylvania. Trenton was held by 1,400 Hessians, German soldiers for hire, on England's payroll. Washington planned a three-pronged assault on the Hessians. General James Ewing's men would prevent the Hessians from escaping. Colonel John Codwallader's militia would prevent reinforcements from arriving. And Washington's 2,400 troops would attack in a head-on assault. On Christmas night of 1776, Washington's troops crossed the Delaware. You know that famous painting of GW standing in the middle of a boat in the middle of a snowstorm? It didn't happen exactly like that because it would have fallen over the side. But Washington's crossing was a pivotal moment in a pivotal fight. Thanks to bad winter weather, only Washington's forces made it through. But the Americans pressed forward. As he approached the town, Washington split his troops in two. They flanked the enemy positions while American cannonballs rained down. The Hessians were totally surprised. They weren't expecting an attack on Christmas of all days. I mean, come on guys, it's Christmas. The Americans routed the Hessians, killing their commander, Colonel Johann Rahl, and capturing over 900 of his troops. Only two Americans died in the attack from exposure. Despite the victory in Trenton, Washington knew he didn't have enough troops to hold the town. So he withdrew, back across the Delaware. Then, word came that a large British force under Generals Cornwallis and Grant was marching south towards Trenton from Princeton, New Jersey. Uh-oh, think fast, George Washington. George convinced his soldiers to stay on for six more weeks. Don't quit yet, guys. The general took his troops back across the Delaware and into Trenton on December 29th. On January 2nd, Cornwallis' army arrived. The Americans were on the other side of a little creek called the Assenpink. Do not laugh at that name. That is the real name. It's Assenpink. Okay? Cornwallis tried three times to cross the bridge over Assenpink, but was repelled each time. But he figured he had Washington's army trapped. He could even see the campfires of the American army. But uh-uh, sneaky George, the campfires were a trick, a decoy. Washington had left a few hundred men to tend the fires and make noise with picks and shovels. The rest of his force hiked the 12 miles up to Princeton in the middle of the night. When Cornwallis' forces awoke on January 3rd, surprise, no Continental Army. Washington's troops were almost to Princeton, but they weren't there yet. The Americans encountered British units south of Princeton and fierce fighting began. American General Hugh Mercer was killed, and the American force was starting to give way when ba -da -da, in rides Tricky George Washington, right in the thick of it, bullets flying everywhere. You kidding me with this guy? The British fled, and Washington took prisoners from the small British force still in town. The Americans had won the Battle of Princeton. The victories at Trenton and Princeton robbed the British of troops and supplies and slowed their plans to quash the revolution. But most importantly, they provided a huge morale boost for the young would-be nation. The Americans proved to themselves that they could mix it up with the British and that George Washington was the one to lead them.